What is up, guys? I'm semi-late, semi-on time. It's Monday. I've been up since... Let's see. I've been up since 3 a.m. yesterday. So now that's like 40-ish hours again. So that's two 40-plus hour stretches in the last four days, <laughs> five days. Very little sleep happening. Um, so I'm a little tired, but it's good. I'm glad to be here. Hamza, yes, you are the first one here. Congratulations! Um, yeah, so despite this fatigue, I want to talk to you guys about my weekend. If you guys don't know, uh, I had a crazy busy weekend. I was on call for 24 hours from Thursday to Friday, and then I hopped on a plane Friday morning, flew out to uh, Maryland. I did seven hours on Saturday at Maryland, and then... After that seven hours of group at Maryland, I then went out to dinner with a couple of my students <laughs> and we had dinner for another five-ish hours. So we didn't finish up dinner until like nine o'clock <laughs> on Saturday. And then uh, I went to bed, got up uh, in the morning on Sunday, caught a flight to New Jersey and then um, out at Montclair State and we did another three plus hours there. And then we did another like two hours at dinner with some of my students, which was cool to to talk and go over personal statements. Uh, and it was just good to see everybody. So it was an awesome weekend. And then after that, because I spent so long at dinner with my students, I messed around and they moved my flight up and then they had like mechanical issues on the flight and it was all this kind of stuff. Long story short is I couldn't get back on my original flight. So then I had to scramble. I ended up going to four different airports on my travels to get back to uh, Southern California. I ended up only getting into Los Angeles, and then I had to drive a rental car from Los Angeles to work and show up to work late. And then I just got off work, and then I had to return the rental car. And then now I'm back here with you guys. So woo, it's crazy. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> let me say hello to everybody. Hewlett, hello. Lenerica, hello. Gabriel, hello. Antoine, Tina, Kasim, Mernaz. Oh, and Mernaz was just at Maryland. Merrill, who was at Jersey. Tina. Uh, yeah, Tina, you should have come to Jersey. I don't know what happened to you. Oh, no. Right? Merrill said it right. But so anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys and bring a couple lessons uh, from the road because it's always enlightening. I like getting out uh, and talking to students, A, because it's just fun to interact. Like, I love being around people. I like seeing you guys have positive moments. So it's always good to see that. But the other thing it allows me to do is to continue to get to know what students need and what's interesting is people always ask me like, well how do you know what we need and it's because i keep my ear right i keep my finger on the pulse i keep my ear to the ground to hear what your guys's concerns are what your guys's needs are and Mernaz is on here Mernaz had a bunch of questions for me um, at the event and we're gonna get to to that in a second um but we'll talk about that but so anyway let's go five plus ish however many i get to lessons from the road so the first is that as students, you don't believe in your personal abilities. Who would agree with that? Who experiences lots of self-doubt in their journey to medical school or in their uh, pursuit of a college degree? Who experiences doubts? For my non-traditional students, who has doubts about their ability to get back into school and do well and survive and thrive? Who has doubts about whether a medical school will judge them for what they're trying to do and, and won't accept them? My older student, who has doubts that medical school is going to judge them for their age or whatever it might be, right? Samira, first live, yay! Uh, right, so we all have these doubts. And what's interesting is I always go out to events and there's a couple things I do at every single event. And when I do events, I try to change it up and make them very different. And students have gone to ultimate events, they always say they always learn something new. But at the same time, I always try to bring a couple core concepts to the table. And I see a lot of hands going up. Everybody's hands going up saying they doubt themselves, right? And one of the first things I have to establish in a room is that you guys are extremely powerful and you guys are capable of doing anything you want to do. That the world is your oyster. All you have to do is go dine. And I often get pushed back from this, A, because you guys don't believe in yourselves, but then once you're like, okay, yeah, I am powerful, it's hard to actually hear that because then what you start to think about is, wait, if I have everything I've ever needed to be successful inside of me 
and I've had failures before, that means it's my fault if I don't get where I want to go. It's my fault I haven't gotten where I wanted to go. And having that perspective change where in your life you've always had this perspective, oh, well, that didn't go right and it was this is fault. And then this didn't go right and this was this fault. Having that flipped around to, wait, you're trying to tell me that all this stuff that I thought was someone else is actually my fault? All this stuff that I thought society, all these that controlled me, it's not my fault? And I thought this came together in two perfect examples. One was a student in New Jersey who was upset because the school he's currently attending was not his first choice. And he pushed back against me when I said, listen, you can do whatever you want and everything's in your control. And he said, well, me going to this school was out of my control. I didn't want to go here. But the financial aid I thought I was going to get from the school I wanted to go to didn't come through. And my mom said she couldn't afford to pay for that school, so I had to go here. And I said, well, let's discuss that. Was that out of your control? And I'll ask you guys, what do you guys think? He wanted to go to a school, he knew he couldn't afford it, and he was hoping he would get a certain financial aid package. He didn't get that financial aid package, and his mom said, you can't go there because I can't pay for it. So he went to another school. Is that out of his control? Is that external to him? And while I wait for you guys to answer, like Kasim just said, like the video, guys. Share the video. It takes two seconds. Share the video to your, your stream. It takes two seconds. Okay? Kasim said no. Judy said be thankful to even get in in the first place. Elizabeth said nope. Right? Tina has it, the, the thoroughness. So that, see, Tina, that's why I need you there in New Jersey to bring that to that uh, session. But, and that's what I explained to him. We, we spent 30 minutes explaining how that was his fault and explaining how he could have gotten the money to pay for school. We talked about walking through strategies for finding loans. We talked about starting businesses. We talked about all these things. And the first thing I pointed out was I said, listen, we all know what our parents make. So you knew well in advance of going to college that your mom didn't have the money for college. Why would you be dependent on some financial aid counselor to give you what you need instead of taking what you need? Like Tina said, beg, borrow, and steal, make something happen. Apply for scholarships, raise the money, fund, do whatever you gotta do, start a GoFundMe, get 200 bucks towards it, whatever you gotta do to get it done. But we don't see it that way. And many of you guys remember that way. Like, oh, you know, if I just would have gotten into this school, my whole life would be different. Oh, I just would have gotten into this one class, my whole life would be different. You, you think that way. But the reality is, if you're not handling your business, you're not going to get there. And it starts with understanding that you're responsible for it. It's not your mom's job to get the money. It's not, <clears throat> it's not your uh, counselor's job to get you the money. Does that make sense? It's your responsibility to go get it done. And it's hard when I tell you that you can't go get stuff done to hear like, oh, wait, it's my fault. I'm at my second choice school, my third choice school, my fifth choice school. It's my fault. That, that's hard to hear and hard to deal with. Come here. Hey, guys. What's up, bud? Good. Do you want to come hang out with me? Yeah. Okay. Can you say hi to everybody? Yeah. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> you got a screwdriver? Yeah. No, this is sword. Oh, it's a sword right it's now? It's a Peter Pan sword. Oh, it's a Peter Pan sword. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Can I talk to them for a second? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So do you guys see what I'm saying? You guys take responsibility. The second thing is, and this gets to... What is this thing, Daddy? This thing holds the, the phone up so I don't have to hold the phone. Well, no... You want to use it? Yeah. Well, can I use it first? Yes, uh, sure. Okay, now I'll give it to you after. Um, is, that, is that okay? Can you wait? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing what is... What are these, Daddy? Those, those are cashews. Oh, what's in there? They're, they're nuts, like peanuts. Oh, I'll eat them, too. Okay, well, you can eat them after. You gotta be quiet, okay? Okay. You can shh. Go shh. 
Okay. <laughs> My kid is curious. He wants everything in the office here. So the second thing, right, beyond us taking responsibility is that we allow other people's, what they say about us, to deeply impact us. Right? How many of you guys feel like when other people say things to you, like you can't do something, or people criticize you, or you feel like people are looking at you and evaluating you, how many of you guys let that affect you? Let that bring you down. Let that stop you from going where you want to go. As an extension of that, how many of you guys listen to people who you're unsure about, right? Like where you have friends who are telling you to do something. You're like, well, yeah, but I'm doing it this way. I'm doing it this way. <laughs> I'm doing it this way. And your friend's like, no, do it this way. And you follow along on this trail like sheep going the wrong direction away from your dreams. Right? And Kendra said, I've definitely done this one. Becky said, 100% agree. Kim said, when I was younger, absolutely. Right? And it's an, it's an immaturity thing before we come into our own and we feel comfortable with our own choices. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do is there's so much negativity in the world. There's so many haters in the world. There's... There's so many people looking to tear you down to make themselves feel better or just to make you not be successful, whatever it might be. So you have to be very diligent and work very hard to shield yourself from other people's things. And remember, just because someone says something to you, someone labels you as something. And one discussion that we got into was about disability. And we talked about both the fact that if you're, if you're labeled as having a learning disability or you're from a community that's labeled as right? And, and a low income, underserved, underachieving community where you're not expected to go far. And you get this label on you where, oh, I'm from this neighborhood. So this is what we do. We don't leave this town, right? Or we get shot in the streets in this town. Or it's, I have a disability. I've been labeled and now I don't get the same opportunities as other people. And the expectation is lowered. And I had a great conversation with one student and we we're talking about how the way we do students with quote unquote learning disabilities in this country is terrible because we all have some learning disability, right? We all have, we all are, most of you guys, right, are awful at studying. Some of you guys are better, but you're still not as good as you could be. And so what's interesting is when you get labeled a disability, they put you in the corner the and they lower the expectations as opposed to Daddy. supporting you to get you better and get you caught up. Daddy, yes. What's our stethoscope? Um. stethoscope? Oh, what's this stuff? Wow. Is it Yeah, here. Mm. <clears throat> okay, does that make sense? We have to avoid letting people label it's us and day. thinking just because they label us as something, a, they call us something, that that is us forever. That that's us. Right? Are you going to go out with the mommy? No. <laughs> I love you, bud. Come on. I'll come play with you in just a minute, okay? Okay. All right, you take the stethoscope. Thank you, Dad. Okay. Can you listen to Cameron's heart? Yeah. Okay, go listen to Cameron's heart, and then I'll come and you can listen to my heart. Okay. Okay. Right? So, <clears throat> everybody wants to label you and put you in a predicament, and what it's your job to do is, <clears throat> A, don't be someone who labels other people, but on the flip side, when people try to label you, Forget labels, be better, be greater. And another way this came up was a student was talking about how they went to a school that was not the big school, right? It was a state school and it was not the big school. And what they were concerned about was being labeled as an inferior applicant. And this person was actually one trying to go to law school. And they were worried about being an inferior applicant because they went to a smaller, right? Less well-known school. And this is where like, when we talked about historically black colleges the other week, right? And I was pretty hard on historically black colleges. And it's like with everything I say, right? I talk about Caribbean schools. It's not that you should never do these things, but they're not the optimum condition. Going to a historically black college is not the optimum. However, you can still be successful from a historically black college. You just have to understand the cons of a historically black college. You can go to a no-name school. You can go to community college and still get to medical school. But you have to understand what the weaknesses are, what the, what the obstacles you're going to face are, that way you can overcome them. Does that make sense? So Alex wants to purchase courses. Alex, you can totally purchase courses. They are available on the website. You can purchase courses. <clears throat> right? 
right? So if you go to a small school, if you go to a state school, you have to understand that that name of that school is not going to carry you into the next level, the graduate school, the medical school. You have to understand that. When you go to a place like Stanford, it may carry you in a way, give you a foot in the door, right? They might hold the door open a little longer to see what you're going to do. But when you come from a smaller school, that's not going to be the case. Your pedigree is not going to carry you, give you an extra opportunity. So what you then have to do is do what we all have to do, which is be exceptional. Success trumps all. Success trumps everything. If you can dominate, nobody cares what school you came from. And this is evidenced by the fact that at, in just in my class at Stanford, so we had a conversation about this at, at the thing, so I actually went up and looked at the exact numbers. So in my class at Stanford, 84 students, we had four students from state schools, including like Long Beach State, which is a small state school, Long Beach State, right? Four students. We had three students out of 84 who were community college students and had gone that route, right? So you can see just in that small number of, this is Stanford, right? It's one of the hardest to get to schools in the country. Out of 84, four went from state schools and another three went through community colleges. That's incredible. But what it is, is being the best you can be. And Kasim just said it, be the best you. So Miranda said, I'm finishing up my associates at a community college, but chose biotech so I could be introduced to molecular biology and upper divisions. Cool. So Antoine said, being from Birmingham, Alabama, no one expected me to attend, right? G GSU. Ooh, ooh. Right? GSU. Judy said, I'm still learning. If I do prereqs at a community college, would that make it more difficult to get into medical school than going straight into university? So this is something we're going to get to in a second, Judy, actually in our next part. But does that make sense to everybody? Labels and the stigmas that come with them and letting that bring us down. So the third thing is what Judy's just talking about. Everyone has problems. How many of you guys, raise your hand right now if you feel like you have problems. Man, i got a problem. I've got an issue. I've got something that's holding me back from being great. I've got a, I got a problem. I've got some uncertainty. I've got some confusion. I've got something that, that I don't know that I want to know. I got something I need that I don't have. All these things. I, gotta, I, gotta, I have to know someone that I don't know. All those things. What's interesting about this is we all have problems and we all have similar problems, but we always think we have a unique problem. And there's no greater evidence of this than when I go out and do an event. And if you've ever been to one of my events, it's very open to the group. We took a vote actually, on Sunday about what they want to talk about, right? It's very open for discussion and con contribution. And so what's interesting is I allow everyone to speak and get clarification and ask questions and all these kind of things without fail. And when you come to my events, I rarely break. So even though it's a break, I already know what's going to happen. So I rarely like, actually leave the stage. So I'll say, okay, guys, take 10-minute break. As soon as I take 10-minute break, I get a line of people who want to line up and ask me individual questions. When I ask them as a group, hey, do you guys have any questions before we break? And they all say no, and then I get bum rushed on the break for people to ask me questions. And the reason people do this is they feel one of two things. One, it goes back to the first thing I was talking about, where they feel like people are gonna be judging them, right? Where they're judging themselves, they want people to see that they maybe have some weakness, maybe have some questions, maybe some uncertainty. The, third, the, the next part is what I'm talking about right now, which is everyone thinks that their problem is unique. Everyone thinks they're going to ask me something that no one else has the same issue. Or they're going to ask me something that I've never encountered before. And Mernaz is saying, ha ha, because Mernaz was doing this to me where she had like 15 questions. And we were sitting there in a big group um, at a break. <laughs> and she's asking all these questions. And I'm like, Mernaz, it's in the course. Here's the answer. And then I'm like, Mernaz, it's not specific. This is something everyone can benefit from. But right. And then someone else asked me a question. I'm like, ah, guys, this is something we could cover as a group because everyone could benefit from this. We get into these silos of not discussing our problems and our issues and what we need, and therefore we feel like we're the only one. And Andrew just said it, we're scared to ask out loud. But if you ask out loud, you'd be amazed how people say, yeah, I have that same question too. And then you don't, it's, then you feel, yes, you feel confused. 
but at least you're now only confused and you're not confused and thinking you're the only one who's confused because that's right it's lonely on top of the the anxiety about being you know being in the know and so i encourage you guys to recognize you guys are not unique your problems are not unique you don't have some issue that no one else has ever brought up and this comes up a lot when people try to email me and ask me for individual coaching and my individual coaching is full right now and i'm not going to open it back up probably again I don't know if see about it, but I'm probably not going to open up individual coaching ever again because I want to do group coaching because it doesn't make sense for me to do individual coaching because you guys all think you have individual questions. You don't. You have the same handful of questions, the same handful of concerns, and that's how I'm able to build such amazing courses for you guys because I know exactly the questions you have. I know exactly the needs you have, and then I address them. So when you take my courses, people ask me, well, how do I know it's going to fit my problem? I'm like, listen, it covers everybody's problems because you all got the same problems and I've worked with enough students to get the outliers right those strange questions that maybe only well, you think they're only you well you know what I'm, hey 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 I'm a non-traditional so my background is very unique you probably never experienced this before and I'm like come on now come on now you're the third person today to tell me I'm a non-traditional you've never seen this before well you know Dr. Pinesap my situation is very unique my GPA is lower than you've ever seen it's not lower than I've ever seen I promise you just tell me the number so we can get on with it, right? <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, we all feel that uniqueness. It's not unique. You guys all got the same problems. So be open to discussing that in a big group. The second part of that is understanding that one-on-one -on -one isn't always the answer. One-on-one -on -one isn't always the answer. Someone sent me a comment. For those prices, he better be reading my personal statement personally about my personal statement course and what was so baller and cool on saturday was one of my students Mahair, came out and Mahair's in my personal statement medical school application course my how to dominate pre-med how to dominate pre-med in the medical school application the definitive guide course so it covers everything a to z from when you start pre-med all the way through applying and so we've never talked about his personal statement and i was having difficulty pulling up my personal statement to read it to the group and so Mahair's like well you can read my personal statement and i was like oh gosh I haven't seen this. This is going to be a direct reflection of the strength of my course. If this personal statement sucks, this whole room is lost. They're not going to trust anything I say about putting a personal statement together. So then I go to read his personal statement. And guys, it was so good. My personal statement is really good. It was so good. I was embarrassed. I felt shy about reading my personal statement after his personal statement. Like, that's how good it was, right? It was like, oh my gosh, this personal statement is so legit, so good, so legit. And it was strictly from taking my personal statement course. And it just like highlights that I know you guys think you're unique. I know you guys think that you need someone to lead you through the personal statement, but it's like, guys, that's what I do in the course. I lead you through every step to develop your stories, to develop who you are, to develop a perspective, to figure out how to bundle it up, you know, to structure all these things in that course so you don't have to trip off it. You don't need someone to read your personal statement because you're a personal statement expert. You're so in the know about the personal statement that you can evaluate other people's personal statement. Imagine that. And that's why I love it. That's the other thing that we were talking about, right? So talk about we, we feel our problems are unique and we feel, right? <clears throat> we'll go to our fourth before I get to that. And then I'll get to that. <clears throat> okay. Yes, courses are gains. And Kim, you want that feeling? Get in that course. I'm telling you. All of them are the freaking bomb. It's amazing. Okay. So number four, we're eager to learn but we don't know who to trust. How many of you guys are eager to learn how to be better in whatever way it is? You're eager to learn how to get into medical school. You're eager to learn about the MCAT. You're eager to learn about all these things in your life. You're eager to learn about relationships, whatever it might be. You're eager to learn, but you don't know who and what to trust when it comes to information. Who feels that way? Yes, Cog. Cult of greatness in the house, y'all. Cult of greatness, gang. Wow, Judy, six babies. Congratulations. I'd have 50. You know what? I would have 50 kids. You guys see my kid. Kids are amazing. I'd have 50. 
Yes, Malena. Codes are coming out right after this. So. Excuse me. I'm truly on cashews. It's hard to know who to trust in this day and age because it's so easy to play the role. It's so easy for people to tell you, hey, trust me, and throw up a fancy website and throw up some fancy videos together to make you feel like they're legitimate. Let's take a step back from that. It's so easy for someone to tell you, hey, I'm a dean, listen to me. Hey, I'm a learning specialist, listen to me. Hey, I'm your paid counselor for the university. I've been at this university for 25 years advising students, trust me. It's hard to turn away from them because you think, man, these are the people that should be bringing me the expert advice that I can trust. I should be listening to these people. And then you go to your counselor and your counselor tells you, oh, you suck, you can't go. You should give up on your dream. You've got too far to go. And this happened on Saturday when someone had a low GPA, 2.5 GPA. And her counselor said, you should give up. You shouldn't go try to go to medical school. You should give up. You should give up. You should give up. You should give up. And it's hard not to listen to them about giving up because they're supposed to know. They're a paid school counselor. They're the pre-med counselor at the university. They should be able to judge if I'm qualified to go to medical school. So if they tell me to quit, I should quit. If the dean tells me I should do this program, I should do that program. And it's hard to see through the fact that they got complacent. And I think that's the nicest way to say it. So often in life, and you guys often feel this, right? You get into college, you get complacent. For my medical school students, you get into medical school, right? You feel good about it, you get complacent for a second, then uh-oh. But what happens in academics, and this is why schools hate having me come out, right? And it becomes this hoop jumping through and I get administrators are upset and whatever. And it's funny, it was even when I have a, a, a faculty try to bring me out, I'll, I'll have a dean who wants to bring me out to a school. And other deans and other faculty will be upset that they want to bring me out to the school because I'm an outsider. And academics, it's like they protect their positions by insulating themselves from newness. It's like politicians, right? They protect themselves, like fraternity of politicians, they protect themselves. And it's the same way with academics. And so these people get into these tenured positions or in these academic positions and they hide out in academics for 50 years and they never advance their thinking. They don't have their ear to the concrete, like I just said. They don't have their thumb on the pulse to see how things are going. And so they lead you guys astray. So I encourage you guys, right? Well, you guys saw the slide. Challenge everything you ever learned about learning, but challenge everything you ever learned about everything. Challenge everything. Even if I say, challenge it. Challenge it. Because let yourself be the judge of what is true. And the way you can figure out what true is, and this is, this is the truth, right? Because And Mernoff was asking me about business books, to, what business books are great. And I said all business books are great. And the reason is, is because you can't expect to learn everything from one book. And in most cases, you can't expect to learn everything from one person. With me, you can, right? But you can't expect to learn everything from one source. And so the way you get a business knowledge is you read a million business books and take a million individual facts or highlights. Or if you read, you know, if you read a 400 page book and you get five pages worth of information, you put that five pages with another five pages with another five pages, and then you have this Rolodex of information that's useful to you. It's the same way with advice. I'll have people who go to one person, they'll go to a dean, or they'll go to a, a teacher, they'll go to a research professor, and they'll ask them a question, and that person will give them an answer, and they just take it. They're like, okay, they said it, I got it, and they just go with that. But even for someone like me, the reason I can feel good about what I tell you guys is because I'm not an N of one. I don't just tell you my personal experience. I don't just tell you what I heard from one dean, from one admissions officer. I make sure before I put something out to you guys that I source it, right? I'm like a journalist. I have to source it five, 10, 15 different people. Before I give you guys a strategy and say, oh, try this, I've gotta make sure that I've vetted it through the process and run it through with people. And if I haven't done that, I'll say, listen, I'm not really sure, but I think you could try this. Let me know how it goes, because if it works, then that's something that I might try with other students. But if you're not out there sampling and actually working to validate things, then you can't be giving valid advice because your sample size is small or your knowledge is outdated. 
So it's hard to do that. The other thing is you got all these people in the technology era who can come at you in videos and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, how do I tell Dr. Pineset or many of these other jokers out here or doctor or whatevers who are doing, you know, whatever they're doing. And what was so interesting, I posted one of the testimonies from the students on Saturday is he said, if I was going to describe Dr. Pineset one word, it's truth. If you guys read my website, if you guys come to those videos, right? I got my kids here. You guys know exactly who I am. You know where I'm from. You know where I'm at currently. I have students come to my house. I have students come to my hospital. I don't hide out. I've got nothing to hide because the truth is the truth. When you guys are telling the truth, when you're being honest with yourselves about what you're doing, you feel good about it. When you feel ashamed is when you feel like you're not being true to yourself and you have something to hide. I feel no shame about anything I bring to you guys because I bring the truth. I brings the truth. And it's so powerful to have the truth. It's incredible. For you guys, it's hard to see what the truth is. But for my students who actually come inside the doors, who get the course, they're like, snap. Snap. You recognize my stuff is head and shoulders. The truth cream rises, y'all. And you're like, once you're in one of my courses, you can't go back. You can't go back to listening to YouTube weirdos. You can't go back to your advisor. And as a part of that, what I was going to say was my students feel confident enough to step up and challenge people on things because they feel like they're the expert. Because they've gotten the best advice and they can go back and tell their advisor or whoever, you don't know what you're talking about. This is what I'm doing. And I love it. And, I, and it makes me feel so proud because it's not about the knowledge I'm giving them. It's about the confidence that I'm giving them in themselves that, listen, if you do your work, if you do the research, if you have the information, you never have to bow down or cower down to anybody who tries to tell you otherwise just because they have a degree, just because they're supposed to have an authority, because they have a title. The truth is the truth, and the truth is never not the truth if it's the truth. Truth. Does that make sense to people? We all know when we're being lied to. Not at first, but how many of you guys, you, the advertising is great, and then you get into something, and five minutes in, you're like, damn, they got me. They got me. And the equivalent I used this, <laughs> this weekend when we were talking about this and these frauds is I bought a grill cover. I don't know if you guys ever saw it. It's called the, I forget what it was exactly called. It was called like the grill mat or something like that. And essentially, you, if you have a barbecue pit, you, the thing looks like, this thing looks like a place mat. And you put it on top, and my wife's probably laughing in the room right now. You put this mat on top of the grill. And in the infomercial, it was amazing. It's like, seals in the juices. You can grill veggies. Never fall through again. Like, all these things. And so I was like, man, this is incredible. I want to seal in the juices and have moist grilled meat. And I want to be able to grill vegetables without worrying them fall through. This is incredible. And I bought the mat. And as soon as I put the mat on the grill... I was like, damn, they got me. <sighs> they got me. They got me. Because all the nasty stuff that normally falls, right, this whole point of grilling, is all that nasty, like, grease and everything falls away from the meat. Well, this mat has magically sealed all that grease and giblets onto the mat with the good meat that I want to eat. <laughs> right? Additionally, my veggies don't get that nice char to them. They're just kind of like Luke. They're just warm. But they're like warm and soggy. They don't get that flame to them. I was like, Ma, they got me. Right? <laughs> Joseph knows what I'm talking about. Ma, they got me. And you say that. Oh. I'm proud of what I bring because students never say to me, oh, Dr. Pinesett, you got me for my dollars. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that my students want more courses from me after they get one course because the truth is the truth. I'm glad when I go out and I do at events, they're never like, oh, no, we're never inviting Dr. Pineset back again. People always are like, let's have him back again for more of that goodness. That felt incredible. That felt amazing. I feel so smart. I want more of that. It's not, oh, no, I got hoodwinked into the grill mat. Mm. Got the grill mat. Right? Or the knives that never need sharpening. Right? And they rust out in three days. 
you didn't get hoodwinked. And that feels incredible. And I don't have a great way to tell you guys how to judge what's real and what's not. All I can tell you guys is, is this is real. I am real. I am bringing it to you. And I don't ever sell false goods. I am the truth. I am the premier productivity expert. I do know more than everybody else. It's just being honest. Okay. Five. It's easy to rationalize. People sometimes get, feel that I'm abrasive, feel that I'm very harsh, feel that I'm very one-sided about things. So David said, so Tina said, next time you're gonna come out. Yes, Tina, next time I come out. David said, my friends tell me I got, fin I got finessed out of $500 but I've only gotten through half of your study course and I'm balling right now in my classes. That's what I'm talking about. Halfway to the course, balling. Meanwhile, they're struggling talking about, oh, why would you pay $500 for a study course? We know how to study. But they're struggling and you're balling out. Joseph said, that's him right now, right? <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> so Judy said, do your courses have uh, what prereqs to take? Yes. So Judy, my how to donate pre-med has everything you could ever want to know about getting into medical school. Everything. <laughs> That's the way I want people to feel is that you're dominating and you, and what's cool is you can sit back with your domination and just feel good about everything because you see everybody else struggling and you're like, man, this used to be me, but now I'm here. I got the truth up in me and now I'm ready, right? I'm a cult of greatness gangster. I'm bringing it. Right? <laughs> Joseph said, we we out here getting 99s on exams and stressing 0%. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, so it's easy to rationalize. So even that, right? Oh, well, I could spend 500 bucks and, and get better, but I won't because I don't need that. I just need to, you know, I'll watch some more YouTube videos. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Right? We rationalize. Oh, you know what? I don't need to buy the book for this course. The book's expensive. I'll just, uh, I'll just go to lecture and I'll be fine, right? Oh, you know what? I didn't take good notes. It'll be all right. I'll get through. I'll get through, right? And we, we rationalize our behaviors and we rationalize what we do and what we don't invest. And Antoine said it right, invest in yourself. It's not even about buying a course, but how many of you guys don't spend time working on yourself? How many of you guys know you have glaring weakness and you haven't put in any time to work on it because you rationalize and you try to trivialize that weakness and say, oh, it ain't going to matter. Oh, no, no, don't worry. That weakness, that's nothing. Don't, sh 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 don't worry about that weakness. Right? How many of you guys got GPAs that are subpar and you're like, oh, don't worry about that. Let me go do some research. Let me go do some volunteering. Let me go do boom. Right? And we don't focus in on what needs to happen. Don't rationalize. That's something I get from these events is that it's super easy to justify and rationalize your inability to do what's required of you. Whether that's in investing in yourself monetarily or investing in yourself just in terms of time and the analytics. And it was cool on Sunday. We had a nice talk and I asked the student how he got better at his studying. And he said, I analyze what I do every semester. And I said, yes. And I gave him fist bump. Bam. Because he's investing in himself by analyzing himself. By being critical of himself, he's taking away other people's power to criticize him, or worse, to smile in his face, wait till he turns around, and laugh at how stupid he's being. As an extent extension of rationalization, we don't commit. And that's the biggest rationalization we make. In the Sunday session, we had a question where I asked them, I said, how many of you guys give 100%? And one guy raised his hand. I said, well, how do you know you give 100%? He says, because I would do anything to reach my goals. And I said, well, do you do anything? He said, I do everything I can to get to my goals. And he sounds committed. I don't know if he is or he isn't. But my point is, is that so few of us have that level of commitment that get rich or die trying that I will make it. I will do whatever it takes 
Instead, we say, I'll do whatever it takes as long as it's not this. I'll do whatever it takes as long as it's not uncomfortable. I'll do whatever it takes as long as it, huh. There's always a but. It can't be a but. It's no excuses, just dominate. It's I'll do everything, not a but, it's an and. I'll do everything and anything required to get where I want to go. And if you commit, that's where success is. But so many of us, don't commit. Don't commit. And that's when it hurts the worst, right? How many of you guys know that you didn't commit yourself fully to a course and that grade comes out B plus and you're like, damn, that B plus is because I didn't commit at an A level and you are mad at yourself. That stings the worst over spring break. That stings the worst. And Merrill said, I'm getting into the study course too. Should I get into that course? My third Dr. Pinesec course and I'm better for it. Dr. P gave us gems at the seminar at Montclair State. Thanks, John Walters, Dr. Pineson, the Premier Family, who made it out there. Thank you again, John, putting it together, Manas putting it together. It was awesome, right? But it feels the worst when we don't give everything. Carmen, what up? The last two things I want to say is, is we need more hugs and loves. Is there anything better than getting a hug? Like a real, not a bull, not a fake hug. I mean like a real like, man, I feel good feelings about you and I want to express that right now in a hug. I think that's why I like doing events so much because people can hug me. You guys can't hug me right now. But I go to events and people feel good and I'm like, can I hug you? And I'm like, hell yeah, you can hug me. Give me a hug. Yeah. And we hug. A real truthful hug. It's freaking powerful. How many of you guys had the worst day ever and someone just says, come on, baby, come on, cry on my shoulder, right? They cry on my shoulder and they hold you. And you're like, dang, if I could just be in these arms forever, right? And I'm a big guy, but my wife is so good to me. She doesn't want to have a rough day. She'll be like, come on over here, honey. Get some of these hugs. Her voice is not that deep, but she's like, give me some hugs. And she'll, she'll grab me and she'll hold me. Hold me tight, close. And she'll give me kisses on my forehead. And it feels incredible. All the day is just vanished, right? My boy, he comes in, he sits on my lap. Oh, I just want to hug him and hold him. And that embrace, it feels incredible. We don't hug enough. We don't love enough. And I'm so excited because I preach this positivity and this loving each other and being good to each other and being kind to each other, right? I, I had the random acts of kindness challenge. Some of you guys saw the video, a lot of you guys get over it, it's all good. But my students who are with me and you guys who are with me are spreading this love and positivity and that this fact that we don't need to hate on each other. We don't have to be contentious pre-meds. We can share resources. Andrea said, the kind of hug you can ex exhale into. Yes, right? But my students share resources and it was so beautiful to me on, sad, on Sunday, um, Meryl was there and I uh, tore Meryl sta Meryl's uh, personal statement apart last time I was in New Jersey. And so she actually exchanged phone numbers with another one of my students and they actually got together and he developed this like color coding thing for her personal statement to help her organize her ideas for her personal statement. He doesn't have to do that, right? She's not paying him for that. It doesn't help him get into medical school, but he has an expert. He has a piece of information that he can add to help her be better. And he said, here you go. Right? And at the same time, what was so cool was Meryl brought a friend to the event who has a disability. And it was beautiful because here this person is who has a disability who's coming out to get herself better. And Meryl took the time to make sure that she got there and drove her there. And, and, and that's beautiful because that's what it's about, guys. Helping people, loving people, caring for people, being kind, being genuine, being truthful, just embracing people in your lives in whatever way you can come at them. And one of the coolest things that, like, if you guys understand about humanity is it only takes, you never know what someone needs. But we don't need everything, but sometimes we just need something. 
And something as simple as a blanket when you're cold, a hug when you're feeling unloved, right? A tissue when you're crying is everything. Is everything. How many of you guys have been starving, right? You've been in lab all night and then you find that crispy, crunchy, dried up, half eaten protein bar in the bottom of your bag and you pull it out and you eat that thing like it's gold. Oh my gosh, I've never tasted food that is this good because you're starving. And so many of us are starving for these little things in our lives. And it's sad that there's some people out there who are in a position to help and don't help. You miss the class, you need the notes, they got the good notes and they won't share. Another one of my students shares his study guides for free even though he doesn't have to. Hey guys, I made this great study guide, get it. And the people who take his study guides and they get better and they do well, that could technically, even though he's getting A's, could affect his curve. But he doesn't think about that, he doesn't think about himself, he thinks about what they need, reducing their stress level, helping their grades. And I'm just so freaking proud of that fact that my students are out here hugging and loving and caring and giving and spreading just positivity that it swells my freaking heart. Forget medical school admissions. Forget studies. Forget all that stuff. I'm so freaking proud that everybody's out here having supreme confidence that my students feel like ballers inside. No matter what happens on the outside, they feel like ballers on the inside and they feel like, man... It's okay to hug somebody. It's okay to embrace somebody. It's okay to help other people. And not only is it okay, it's awesome. It's not just okay, it's the best thing you can do. We look for ways to help others and help others get better. And I'm just so freaking proud, man. I'm like, it makes me proud. And what's interesting, and I don't know if it's causatory, corollary, whatever, but when people start believing in themselves and they stop focusing on competing with other people and start only competing with themselves to get themselves better and start looking to nurture and establish relationships and connections with people, their lives become richer in so many ways. And one of those ways happens to be their grades, happens to be their admissions to medical school, happens to be all these things. And I got a, a good email actually literally right before I came on the stream of a student who raised his MCAT score up to 508. And I won't get into the specifics of his score and where he came from, but he's like, I am so happy with this score, so thankful, da da da, all this kind of stuff, and he's ready to get to the next course. But the point is, is man, that's awesome. Man, that's awesome. I got students who are on committees, forming their own coalitions, or their own organizations, doing their own things to better the world. And I'm freaking ecstatic about it. Because like I continue to say, I don't care about being famous. I don't care about having the most followers. What I care about actually is not having any followers. I want leaders. And it's like I said in the seminar this weekend on Saturday. The whole point of the session is for you to leave here thinking that you can and will be better than me. Not that you're going to be like me. No, that you're going to be better than me. And that's what I'm starting to feel from my students who are like, you know what? I appreciate what you taught me. And now I'm going to go spread my wings and go, Caw! fly to the freaking top because it is cult of greatness gang and I'm so just thrilled and that's all I wanted to say was like oh, I know I said a lot I said that's all I wanted to say right but I said a lot as always right but does everybody understand what I'm saying if you guys get what I'm saying right now like this video let me understand that you guys know what I'm talking about right now that the world is a, an amazing place if you let it be Judy said, every time I get discouraged, just watch your videos and it gives me confidence again. Thank you, Dr. B. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to hear. Gang, gang, right? <laughs> Gucci gang, Gucci gang. We're greatness gang, greatness gang, greatness gang, greatness gang. That's what I'm going to say. Like, that's going to be our, our tag call, right? Beast mode, all these things. I appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate you guys. Come, like, I always tell people when I come out of events, I'm truly appreciative. I'm truly thankful because I can be in a room full of empty people. But I'm thankful when people come out. And even if the turnout's not what I think it's going to be sometimes. I'm like, man, if there are five people in this room, you're going to get all, my all. You five are going to get my all. Yes. And David, the merchandise is coming, as is everything is coming, right? I'm trying to do everything at once. <laughs> but the merchandise is coming because I want you guys to be able to wear your feelings on your shirt and understand, yes, it is no excuse just dominate. Yes, it is dominate pre-med. Yes, it is. You are a certified MCAT killer, right? We getting it. 
And the sleep is not coming well. But I'm going to sleep tonight. My wife's going to hug me. And then I'm going to go to sleep. Um, so I'm going to get out of here so I can go hang out with my kids for a couple minutes before they go to bed. I'm sure my daughter's already asleep. But at least I get some time with my son. But I, I appreciate you guys truthfully. And I hope you guys can take these lessons and, and, and internalize them. Have them for yourselves. If you guys aren't in courses, get in courses. It's not a scam. It's not snake oil. It's not any of that, guys. You know what it is? It's love and opportunity and possibility. That's strictly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And I'll share one last thing with you guys. I got an email today, which is, again, another beautiful thing, right? This is telling you that my courses are touching people. I had a guy, he was a, a military vet, a couple years back, 2016, when I first had courses. And he's like, man, I'd love to get in your course. I got to get my grades up. I'd love to know how to study better. But I don't have the money. Can we work out something? And I said, I'll tell you what. Here's the course for free. You let me know when you have the money and you can pay me back. This is two years ago. He sent me an email today. I'm sorry, it was my MCAT course that he had. He, my MCAT course. So this was way back when it first came out. And he just sent me an email today saying, Hey, Dr. Pineset, just want to let you know, I haven't forgot about you. The MCAT went great. And I actually got into medical school. I'm going to be starting medical school in the fall. And now I'd love to get your five pillars of studying course, but I still don't have the money for the first course. Can I get in the five pillars course? And <laughs> that's a tricky spot, but I'm probably going to get access to the five pillars course because the objective is, is that someone should feel like you respect them enough and you value them enough by what you give them that they want to give it back to you. So he could have just left in the dark and never said anything about the money he owed me for the MCAT course. And just went on to lose. He said, listen, I know I owe you that money. I'm going to get it to you. I just don't have it yet. And he does that because he understands that I'm bringing value to him. And he wants to respect that like I respect him. Yes? So have a nice day, everybody. Judy says, can you tell me what course to buy first? So for everybody, here we go. You ready? Here's the official order you should buy courses in. The very first course you should buy is from the bottom of the pre-med pack to Stanford Medical School in 21 days. It is a short course that opens up your mind and changes your mindsets, that way you can be ready for my other courses. It's a very short course, you can get through it quickly. My other courses are much more dense. So depending on what your needs are, but for most everybody, you have to get grades before you get everything else, so I would recommend getting the five pillars of studying less and getting better grades. If you can't afford that course, or you're like, you know what, I wanna get Dr. Pinesett stuff, but I'm not ready to invest $500 worth, then get my How to Double Your Study Efficiency course. That course is the first pillar of my five pillars. And it is incredible in its own right. Okay? Then, from there, I would get How to Dominate Pre-Med and the Medical School Application, the Definitive Guide. Why? Because this tells you exactly how to pre-med like a boss. If you want to be the ultimate pre-med, then have the best application, and have the first personal statement, that's the course. That way you don't ever have to be confused or uncertain about any decision you ever make in pre-med. Because every single question, as Mernaz learned, is covered in that course. And the beauty is, guys, I, I'm not stagnant. I'm not someone who takes your money and runs. If something is not covered in that course, I will add it to the course, which is why I'm updating the courses now. Because I want them to be comprehensive. I want all of you guys to be 100% certain in whatever you guys do. Boom, boom, boom. Does that make sense to everybody? So, Judy, that's what I would say to you. And then you can get MCAT as you need it or interview skills as you need it, whatever else. But from the bottom, the five pillars, and then how to dominate pre-med definitive guide. Get it, right? Joseph said five pillars is dope. I was skeptical. But now I know it's legit. Merrill said, it's great for non-traditional students too. That's the pre-med course, right? And then, can you repeat that? Because I was getting pen and paper. <laughs> From the bottom of the pre-med to San Francisco 21 days first. Then, five pillars of studying lessons, getting better grades, second. Then, how to dominate pre-med, the definitive guide, third. Then, whatever specialty course you need after that. Does that make sense? And how to dominate pre-med, the definitive guide is like 50 courses in one. So go look at the content list. You can see it covers everything. Okay. Also, if you guys have noticed, 
There's one more day of my, of my website being, quote unquote, not secure. The website is secure. You can purchase courses, you can access courses and feel okay. No hackers are coming in to get your information. It only says that because I attempted to update the MCAT course last week and I crashed the site. And when I crashed the site, because I add so much content to the site, when the people who issue these security certificates scan the site again, there's so much new content that they say, oh, we have to review that content before they can say you're secure. But that content, okay, is my content. It is secure, and they're going to reissue the certificate tomorrow, I think, or Wednesday, either tomorrow or Wednesday. But the point is, it's secure. So when it gives you that, oh my gosh, the hackers are getting you alert, just click advanced or learn more, and then it'll give you the option to click through the website, and you can go right to the website. Or like Asim was saying, just erase your history, your cache, and then go back to the website, and it's totally fine. So don't be alarmed by that. Courses are fine. Your information is secure, I promise you. Okay? All right, I gotta go. I gotta give my kids. So Becky said, last question. What is your, what is your out of undergrad, the pre-med course, have any points for non-traditional? Yes. So Becky, if you're a non-traditional student and you wanna navigate to medical school, if you're any student and you want to navigate to medical school and you don't ever want to have to hire a pre-med advisor or ever have to go to a seminar again or ever have to go to a conference again or ever have to go to your advisor ever, get in the course, How to Dominate Pre-Med and the Medical School Application, The Definitive Guy, because it's everything. Daddy, Are you telling me it's officially time to come Daddy, play? Daddy, you play with me? Yes, come here. I'll come play with you. Okay. Okay. I will you have a Okay. So I told you guys it was time for me to play. So I got to go. So the website is www.premedprotv.com. Go get a course. We'll be back Sunday going live. Live. Live? Yeah. You say live action. Live action. Say woo woo. Woo woo. Wait. <laughs> What's this? I'm watching. Okay. So wait. Look up here. Look up here. Go woo woo. Woo woo. Woo woo. Woo woo. Say balling. All right, guys. And I was for those. Those are the cashews again. Oh. I will see you guys later. We're going to go play. Later.